Here's the, the rest of the timeline, at least for the last uh, few days. Fossil also develops very fast. So you see a lot of check-ins from different people. And you see different branches that uh, can fork and merge back again. And uh, uh, they're, they're often color-coded so that it's easier to identify separate branches or uh, separate authors. And what I'm doing with uh, the bindings uh, 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 to get the syllable source code into this, because it's still in CVS, because we, we were always looking for a, a good version control system and there wasn't one um, for various reasons. Uh, we have to uh, import it from CVS. And that's, uh, that's a tricky operation, so uh, that will be a separate project to, uh, to, uh, to migrate the, the syllable source code from CVS to Fossil. But what, what I'm doing so far is uh, uh, entering my own source code of the bindings I have been talking about uh, into, uh, into Fossil. Uh, oh, there are probably a few links straight on this page. I have to go to my bindings. Let's see. Where's my zero and Q binding? Um, let's go to the front page. This is one of my uh, documentation pages. Here's my, uh, my uh, small website for Rebel stuff. And here's the uh, zero and Q binding, for example, and then you get uh, the uh, the three bindings for Rebel three, two, and Red uh, on one page. And then here I have links to uh, the source code. And here uh, I'm now I'm on Cheyenne now. This goes through our infrastructure through Nginx. And I think this is a static page, so this is probably... Six minutes left. Yeah, this is probably served by Nginx. Uh, but if I click on this link to the red binding, uh, then I, under the same domain name, uh, Nginx rewrites this to uh, Fossil. So I already showed that Cheyenne is now uh, a back-end web server behind uh, Nginx. But Fossil is now also uh, a back-end web server behind Nginx. So at the same domain name I can now run three web servers without the user knowing it. Nginx for static content, Cheyenne for dynamic content and Fossil for distributed databases and source control. And here you're going to a, 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 si a single file, so now Fossil uh, in our, uh, our, uh, our data center in Amersfoort is now Foss. Fossil is serving a single file through Nginx and if I go to the complete repository oh yeah, here's one, here are the complete repositories so this is uh, 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 a Fossil repository in the same way that you just saw for Fossil itself and in this rep Fossil repository is the uh, my zero MQ binding for red, for example, and I'm putting a, uh, one thing about fossil is that the databases are very tiny, so you can give and it's distributed and flexible and, and, and decentralized, so you can give every project its own small database. Uh, so uh, the syllable source code is now in one huge CVS repository, but uh, I'm putting all my bindings each in a separate fossil repository, it's much nicer. Now here you have the timeline and there's a weird thing, I, I don't know why, but in the fossil timeline you saw the nice timeline graph that's actually generated as an image, and for some reason the image doesn't get through uh, on my own fossil, and actually I'm now thinking why, I think I am rewriting images to Nginx. So I think it is looking for this image on Nginx uh, and actually the image is generated dynamically by Fossil. So the timeline is missing here because it's an image uh, that was dynamically generated by Fossil but I think it's being uh, caught by Nginx. But which... Would it be visible in the HTML source code? Uh, yeah, the link to it but not yeah. the image because yeah. Nginx blocks it so I, I have to 
uh, to adapt my Nginx configuration to, to get the image from Fossil as well, I think. Brainwave just now. So that's how uh, we're now managing the new source code. And I'm doing that with my new bindings because I'm, I can simply make new, uh, new Fossil repositories. But eventually we will move the entire syllable source code to Fossil repositories and then everything will become much more modern and much more flexible and much more efficient. Now, here are all the websites that we're making with our content management system written in Rebel. <clears throat> well, that leaves the, the last uh, topics. Um, uh, 3D. 3D is one of those uh, hard uh, topics for an alternative operating system, especially open source. Um, uh, it's very hard to get uh, 3D uh, drivers, especially uh, hardware accelerated drivers. Uh, so even Linux has a problem with that. Linux doesn't have uh, all the hardware 3D drivers that Windows has. So even for Linux that's a problem. <coughs> We don't have any 3D system at all in Syllable Desktop. So we have always said it's, it's not a high priority uh, to do 3D. Uh, if you do it in software, it will be very slow. So uh, we'd ha you can only really do 3D uh, in hardware, but for that you need all the hardware accelerated drivers. And that's such a hard task that we can't do it with our current resources. So uh, we have only made very small steps towards 3D. But what you can do with software 3D, and you can't do much with that because yeah, it's slow, so you can only run small things or old games. But uh, old games are still nice. And uh, one of our contributors was looking into 3D uh, a while ago, so I, I started looking into it uh, again as well, because already five, maybe even seven years ago, five years or so, uh, someone ported Mesa 3D to Syllable, the software implementation for OpenGL for open source. Uh, but it was not finished. It, it wasn't properly integrated with our build system, my, my build system for Syllable. And it was always very difficult, and at the time I already spent a lot of effort on it, uh, to integrate it better, but it wasn't properly integrated, so nobody ever continued with it. And uh, uh, a guy in France uh, found a, a, a tiny software implementation, and I knew about TinyGL, that's an old software implementation, uh, which is quite nice for small things, uh, and a, a very lightweight alternative to uh, Mesa 3D. So we have two software implementations, MISA and TinyGL. But TinyGL stands alone, you have to program it directly. So if you have no 3D programs, uh, you still can't do much with it. But one thing you could do is integrate it with SDL and then you can run uh, SDL OpenGL 3D games. Uh, uh, maybe on TinyGL. But TinyGL itself didn't have a SDL backend. So what the guy in France found uh, a while ago uh, was uh, uh, an, uh, an extension of TinyGL, a further development that adds an SDL backend. And then it starts becoming interesting because then you can really, um, uh, then you can have pictures in 3D on syllable because you can run it on SDL. <clears throat> and then we, uh, we looked into that and then we found an even better uh, new version of that and that is uh, PicoGL. So PicoGL is a further development of the old TinyGL with an SDL backend and uh, that's an alternative software implementation for Mesa 3D. But because we were uh, looking into that, I looked into Mesa 3D uh, again as well and I made the very old ports that are in our build system, I made them uh, 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 fully work, so they are now fully integrated. And we had three versions, it was all a huge mess by, by several people, and all of them were not finished, so all of them didn't really work. And I finished them, and we have now two old MISA versions that compile and that are usable. 
and then uh, I looked into the newest version and then I ported the newest Mesa 3D, 7.10 or something, I don't remember, 7, yeah, 7.10 I think, 7.10.4 or something. Uh, so I ported the latest Mesa 3D software implementation. But of course we still don't have drivers and the problem is you can uh, use Mesa to draw a 3D picture 